This is part two of a series of videos that I'm doing to show you how I go about resolving an issue I've got in my Toyota Bandera running the Ecotec 3.8 V6 motor. So this series is all about an issue I'm having where my engine's burning oil, it's fouling up plugs, it's causing O2 sensors not to work, and we're going to go through all of those, resolving all of those issues in this series of videos. I'm hoping to do it all in a day, so we'll see how we go. Now, um, so this particular part two is all about the compression test, and I want to do that so that I can understand the basic health of my engine and a compression test is an excellent way to do that. So this is part two of this series. Here at Mad Mat 4 Wheel Drive I'm all about educating and got building community especially within the four wheel drive space. So I love my four wheel drives and I love my little Bandiras which are Toyota Land Cruiser my, um, vehicles. So to start with the first thing I'm going to do with the compression test is to pull out the spark plugs on all of the cylinders. Now I will say I've actually warmed the motor up a little bit so it's not dead cold and that'll just give me a better uh, set of numbers to work with, a little bit more reliable. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be pulling out my ECU fuse and my fuel pump relay. So that'll stop me pumping fuel in whilst I'm doing the cranking test and it'll stop the ignition from firing. So let's pull these spark plugs out. When you pull your spark plug leads off, make sure you know where each spark plug lead goes back to. And you can either label them. My spark plug leads are already labeled, you know, actually written on the plug leads. So what is a compression test? So essentially an engine um, needs to make explosions to run. I think we all probably understand that. And in an engine like this, it's called a four-stroke engine. It uses four, four strokes of, a, of the piston going up and down to create the, um, the combustion cycle. So the four strokes, are, the simple way to remember it is suck, push, bang, blow. They suck in air and fuel mixture. They push it up and compress it into a, a very dense mass. Then we ignite it with the spark plug and it pushes, um, sorry, it bangs the piston back down. That's our power stroke. That's where the engine's actually doing something worthwhile. And then we blow the unwanted or waste gases out of the engine. And that's the exhaust stroke. And then that cycle starts again. So each, for each cycle, um, for one explosion, we need to, the piston needs to go up and down twice and that gives us the four strokes. A two-stroke engine, like a chainsaw or something like that, will only do that twice, but that's a whole different kettle of fish, and we won't go into that in this video. So a compression test, when we're doing that, that, that push stroke, where we're compacting it into a really tight mass, if that mass isn't tight enough, we don't get a good explosion. And so a compression test is where we're going to measure how much compression or pressure we create inside the cylinder and we're going to use this little gauge here to do it but let me keep getting these spark plugs out so now i've got all the spark plugs out i've got my ignition leads out of the way of fans or belts or anything like that because we're going to actually turn the motor over i've pulled out in my case my efi relay and my fuel pump relay in your case you could do that or you might pull the fuses out of the fuse panel just look in your owner's manual as to where those fuses are in your car Essentially, you don't want spark and you don't want fuel for this test. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my compression tester and you can buy these at pretty much any auto store and it's going to screw into all different engines. They usually come with a bunch of different adapters, a flexible hose or whatever it might be to, so you can get it into the spark plug holes. And that's where this is going to screw into here. And then when we do the actual test, we're going to get a reading on this gauge. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write myself a piece, on a piece of paper, one through six cylinders, and then when I get a reading, we're going to write that reading down. So once you get the compression gauge screwed into the cylinder, you then put the vehicle in neutral, put your handbrake on, make sure it's on, and then crank the engine over. And what I like to do is crank it so that the gauge 
does about eight or nine um, hits or that cylinder basically registers on the gauge eight or nine times and that way you get a good even setting and you do that across all six cylinders. Well the numbers are in and I am very happy but it is as expected. Now one thing I failed to mention earlier in the video is this. I also held open the throttle and that's just to allow lots of air in whilst I'm cranking the engine over. So just remember to do that. Now what, do the, what numbers did I get? My gauge registers in PSI. So basically 170, uh, well 165 was my lowest, my highest was 180 and the rule of thumb is 15 degrees spread. Now I've gone to my workshop manual, they give me a 30% spread. So the spread is the difference between the lowest and the highest. Look, I am well and truly inside that sp those spread uh, specifications. And it also tells me what the minimum compression I'm allowed is. And it converts to, from KPA in the book, it converts to 100 PSI. I am well and truly in the specification range. So what that tells me is my engine is as healthy as I could ever want it to be. And that's to be expected. This motor is pretty much was brand new when it was put into the conversion. So that's a great thing. Now, if I got some numbers back here that were a bit variable, the next test I would do is a wet test. And that's what I've got a column here. I'm not going to do it in this video, but that's basically, I would put a squirt or two of oil into each cylinder and that's going to flow down and sit on top of the comp uh, piston rings. And when I did the compression test again, if I see these numbers increase, that tells me that the oil has sealed up the, the rings and has given me more compression. That would tell me that my rings are worn out and I need to do the engine up. Um, if it didn't make a difference, that tells me that the low compression could be coming from a leaking head gasket, a, my inlet or exhaust valves being leaky and needing a service. But um, that sort of information be, can be gathered. Now there are other tests that you can do and that would be a cylinder leak down test. Um, that's a little bit more involved, but that's basically we put pressure, compressed air into the cylinder on compression stroke where the spark plug would fire at that part of the cycle. We would put compressed air in there and we see how long it takes for that air to leak away. We, it also tells us where the air is coming out. So we might be able to, if it's a, so let's say the inlet valve is faulty, we would hear the air leaking out through the inlet manifold or an exhaust valve, we'll hear it through the exhaust pipe. So the cylinder leak down test is a more advanced test again that can tell us the health of the engine. Anyway, I hope this has been a helpful video for you to understand how to do a compression test on your engine. If it has, I'd love you to hit that subscribe button. And remember, this is a video that is part of a much bigger series where I'm delving into why I've got a misfire in my engine and I'm going to be doing a bunch more videos going about changing the spark plugs, we're going to change the valve stem seals, we're going to change O2 sensors and a whole bunch of cool stuff. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Mad Matt, stay safe on the trails.